It's time to babble the fuck on. Live from the John Lovitz Podcast Theater, it's Hollywood Babylon. With your hosts, Kevin Smith and Ralph Garman. Turn the music down. See how long the theme lasts? It's so fucking long. It's a long theme. We got we got hours of that. Has it always been like that? We could do a whole mime show up here. We could just have that underneath us all night long. It is Saturday night in Hollywood, so let's babble the fuck on! Yeah! (laughs) I am the stoner, Kevin Smith. Obviously. And I'm the drunk Ralph Garman. Welcome. Thanks for coming out, folks. You nice, Thanks nice for being people. here, man. I just carted ass all the way over from fucking Santa Monica. I went to an event where J.J. Uh, Abrams has that bad robot production company. Is. He uh, had a, this event where, uh, what's the dude's name who does his score? Michael Giacchino? Yeah, right. I think that's how you pronounce that name. I was just there, and I didn't listen. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it had, like, more than two syllables, and I was like, fuck that. Um, so he had this whole orchestra on the roof of Bad Robot, And they played all this music from, like, uh, Bad Robot stuff, from, like, uh, Super 8, a lot of Super 8 stuff. Uh, He played some Mission Impossible from the recent Mission Impossible. Lost. It was quite lovely, man. It was in there. You could throw a rock, hit a fucking famous person. I saw Ben Affleck. He did not say hi. (laughs) Affleck's your buddy. I know, but he was with his wife. Oh, that, that explains it. Jennifer hates you. <laughs> I guess. Yeah. Thank you, sir. But uh, in any event, it was really, really sweet, man. It was cool. And then uh, I went because I, I, you know, I like JJ. He's a nice guy. But uh, my kid fucking loves Super 8, like you read about. Like, like the way I loved uh, Empire Strikes Back when I was a kid, that's the way she loved Super 8. She knows all the dialogue and huh. shit. Like, it's crazy. So she wanted to, to go to uh, the event because there, there was the musical portion. And then after, was they were having a screening and a Q&A with the cast and the director. And I was like, oh, you want to go see another director's Q&A? <laughs> and she's like, yeah, I'm relatively sure J.J. Abrams isn't going to talk about my mother's asshole. Yeah. And I was like, fuck you, man. That's how daddy earns. Didn't Super 8 come out like two years ago? No. It came, <laughs> out, it came out at this summer, I Did think. it really? Yeah, yeah, It feels yeah. like a long time. It's, it felt like an awards kind of like, uh, hey, 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 everybody, remember this? I mean, when you're outside in the air playing music and walking in Santa Monica and shit, yeah. there's a bunch of voters out there who I'm like, that's pretty, what's that? You know, later on, <laughs> like a month that off from on now, my ballot exactly, box. Exactly, they're going to vote for it. It was, very, it, was, it was nice, though. It was very sweet. But the kid... I had to leave to race over here, man. The Q&A hadn't started yet. They were just about to get going. Like, I bumped into the chick, the one of the Fannings. Uh, the, one of the, one of Dakota. Them. Well, she L, wasn't L. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was going to go B, C. I was going through the <laughs> alphabet in my head. But uh, they were about to start Oscillating, the Q&A. oscillating Fanning. <laughs> Pretty much, oscillating yeah. Fanning. Yeah. Um, huge Fanning. Um, the, uh, I, I, I got to see the beginning. Got in a car, came the fuck over here to do Hollywood Battle. Oh, well, thanks for Left my kid there, just realized she has no ride home. <laughs> <laughs> but she'll be fine. She's a 12-year-old in Hollywood. It'll work out, man. <laughs> totally. <laughs> my dad's directed clerks. <laughs> <laughs> Too fat to fly, couldn't give me a ride. <laughs> Well, thanks for coming. Imagine if you had told your daughter, we have to leave because I have to do Hollywood Babylon. She would not have appreciated it. Yeah, I was like, come with me. I'm going to go tell cock jokes at a bar. Yeah, that that wouldn't work. Well, I just rushed over here from Studio City. I was changing a shitty diaper. So uh, we had had similar evenings. (laughs) Kind of. You're watching a grand orchestral performance. Yes. I was uh, smelling uh, uh, baby shit. (laughs) So I'm glad to be here. It's the circle. (laughs) The circle. Under your tail. Held little Kimba up there, and we changed her diaper. Right on, man. Uh, we start off the show every week with shout-outs of people who have come particularly long distances or are celebrating special occasions to spend the evening here with us, and we do oh, appreciate fuck, you being good. here. It's just a perfect blend of lemonade and iced tea, man. Well done, whoever put this one together. 
My compliments to the chef. I'm in the middle of a setup here, and you, you stopped the show for an Arnie Palmer. You're talking about shout outs. I wanted to give one. This is an amazing Arnold Palmer. Big shout out. You're an easily impressed young man. Tonight, yes. Yes. <laughs> anyway, we got a theme for it and everything. It's called shout outs. It's a shout out. With Kevin and Brown, so get your cock out. Yeah. Get your cock out. I'm not even going to look. I'm not. I don't even want to know what's going on over there. I got it. By the way, this is an excellent mix of Jack Daniels and Ice, too, whoever did this one. <laughs> mm. Just the right amount of straw. I like that. <laughs> All right, let's talk about shout-outs. Is uh, Scott and the David here? Woo! Hello, Scott and the David. Oh, what? thank you. Someone sent what me one it? of these. And there's a note. There's a note attached. <laughs> Usually something like that's thrown through my window when there's a note attached. Yeah. There... Um, Dear Ralph, I've stolen your kidney. No. <laughs> Call 911. You're in a tub of ice. Uh, this drink is for the one and only Laquisha. Shut up, Snooky. From the Sitch. For those listening who don't uh, live in the uh, Southland here in uh, Southern California, I do a character on the radio called Laquisha. Do you really? Yes. She is, uh, she is a, uh, an African-American woman who reviews um, reality television for the, the morning show team that I work with. Can so. we get a taste? Mm-hmm. Shut up, Snooky! <laughs> well, I'll give her this drink backstage. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, anyway, where were we? Scott and the David came all the way from San Francisco, California. My name is Scott, and I'm traveling with my friend, the David. The <laughs> not, to, not to start in right away because I'm only a drink and a half into the show, but The David. Your nickname is The David? Evidently. Uh, your name's David, but they call you The David. I'm The David, man. <laughs> the, the David. It's like the Fonz? Or the... Uh, instead of traveling down 5, 101, or PCH, Scott writes, we took the scenic route and traveled down Liam Neeson's cock. <laughs> they took the long way. <laughs> I was pretty wasted the other day while listening to your New Year's Eve show, and in the middle of the show, my roommate let me know that our TV was busted. So, facing a weekend without PS3, I called the David and suggested we road trip to see your show, to which he replied, fuck yeah. <laughs> all right, the David. <laughs> thanks for all the free funny, Scott and the David. Well, thanks for making the trip all the way down from San Francisco, gentlemen. We appreciate that. Yeah. That should be our new uh, tagline. Hollywood Babylon, we're better than a broken TV. The Ralph thanks you. The Ralph thanks you. Uh, Mike and Charity Smith. Joe I think he just solved the Kennedy murder for us. <laughs> Mike just shouted, Joe DiMaggio killed Kennedy. Is that right? Is that, is that a true theory? Sure. Oh. <laughs> sounded good for a second. Yeah. He was just uh, shanking uh, line drives out of that window in the book depository <laughs> and just beating Kennedy in the head. Uh, Mike and Charity Smith. Back uh, and to the left. Field. <laughs> he pointed before he hit him. <laughs> My wife and I are huge fans of the podcast, and she let me plan our entire honeymoon around coming to the show on January 7th. Nice. Nice. When At did you guys get married? About a month ago. Congratulations, Thank man. Yeah, it is. You got married out here, did you? No, we got married in Utah. Oh, they're, that's they're smart, because out here she'd take half. <laughs> in my house, more than half, you yeah. know? I hear that all the time. She's always, I was like, yeah, I get it. You'll take half. She's like, oh, I'll start with half. No prenup, dude? No. Oh. I went in like, I, that just seemed kind of phony to me. It's just like, I'm going to love you forever, but if not, here's this piece of paper. <laughs> so me, I was just, I remember talking to my lawyer, too. He was just like, You're, are you getting married this weekend? Like, because it was a spur of the moment thing. We were up at Skywalker Ranch mixing dogma. Right. And she was already pregnant. She was eight months pregnant with uh, Harley. And uh, You she almost forgot like, her name there for a minute, didn't you? A little bit. Yeah, I was one, like, which from one? Tonight. The one I was from like, tonight. I was like, which one of my kids? I was like, I only have one. Harley. <laughs> Um, and she's like, oh, it's so beautiful up here. She's like, we should, uh, it'd be a great place to get married. I was like, yeah, totally. You should get married here one day. 
And she was like, I meant us. And I was like, oh, yeah, we should. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then she was like, what about this weekend? And I was like, I'm okay. And we pulled it together very, very fucking quickly. So, um, fuck, I forgot why I was even telling this story. Uh, your lawyer found out you were getting oh, married right. the weekend. Oh, right. So there we are. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So there we are. I'm about to get uh, married. Like, Mosier's up there with me, and he's my best man. A uh, friend of Jen's lived in the Bay Area, so she came over, uh, and she was going to be her maid of honor. And uh, I, my, I talked to my, I was talking to my lawyer about something completely unrelated. And I was like, hey, man, by the way, you, remember, you know Jen. He's like, yeah, I love her. I was like, we're going to get married up here at Skywalker. He's like, what? And I was like, yeah, we're gonna, we decided we're going to get married. Just kind of elope, do it real quick. We got this Dutch Catholic monk to come up and marry us and shit. He Diplomatic was a, immunity. Totally. Absolutely, yeah. man. All the way. He was, he was fucking badass. He loved the Matrix. He'd quote the Matrix in the sermon. He's like, take the blue. Jesus says, take the blue pill. You know? <laughs> He seemed very cool, and then I thought he was so cool, I showed him first cut of Dogma, and he was just like, this is sick. <laughs> he wasn't that cool anymore. But in any event, he came over to marry us at the place and shit. So I tell my lawyer this. I was like, yeah, this Dutch Catholic monk's going to come over and marry us. And, he, and my lawyer goes, um, I, I hate to be this guy, but I'm your lawyer. Are you sure you don't want to throw a prenup in there real quick? I could fax you something very fast that she could sign. And I was just like, oh, God. The, the notion of like, hey, man, I love you, my baby's inside of you, we're about to tie ourselves together here at fucking Skywalker, man. Like, look, there's an Ewok. <laughs> we were in a room where there was furniture where I was like, I've spent so much money on Star Wars shit, I probably bought that chair, you know? <laughs> so I felt like this is a great place to do it. And then suddenly I'd present this fucking paper and I was like, ah, no, no let's fucking do it. If, if, if it all blew apart at the end of the day, I always felt like she'd be entitled to at least to have she, you know, the kid. She brought the kid into the world. Right. So, so far, so good. There was no prenup, and, and she's never kind of imploded yet. But every once in a while, whenever we talk at work or kind of joke about divorce, she always lets me know very fucking quickly that the California 50%, you know, is a myth. It's really the fucking Schwabach 98%. That's the starting point. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's where you begin. Anyway, well, sorry, back to the show. Mike and Charity uh, plan their honeymoon around uh, coming down here. Mike adds, as you can see, I set the bar pretty low in order to prepare my bride for a lifetime of lowered expectations. <laughs> Very wise, Mike. Smart play, man. In a way, it could be said that Kevin helped bring us together because our love of his films and Smodcast. We met online, and that's one of the very first things we found we had in common. We both agree that no one could get killed by a giant CG tentacle like Ralph. Well, thank you very much. Damn you, shark the push. <laughs> but no one was going to get that reaction, I would have done a better read. I thought she was talking about some gay porn she saw you in or something. Like that. that was a real tentacle. That wasn't CG. <laughs> Damn you, octopus. <laughs> yeah, I saw the balls. You don't need to emphasize. <laughs> Cradle the balls. Uh, we're driving all the way from Ogden, Utah to make it to the show. You, came, you guys drove in from Utah today? Wow. Right on. We're not Mormon, but her family is, but there's no fucking way they'll ever hear this, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> That's true. They probably have a lot of Mormon listeners to Babylon, I'm thinking. Uh, we can find out right now. Everyone, show us your onesies. <laughs> <laughs> Who's wearing magic underwear in the crowd tonight? <laughs> Anyone eating jello while we speak? Magic underwear. <laughs> Uh, that said, after smoking a bowl and having premarital sex, one night we thought it would be great if Ralph could give us a shout-out as Pee Wee Herman congratulating us on our nuptials. Mike and Charity Smith. <laughs> if you love him so much, why don't you marry him? <laughs> oh, you already did. <laughs> there you go. Pretty cool. Pretty cool that you're married. <laughs> Chad Silverstein. Chad, are you in the crowd? Hold on, before we jump into that, I wish I could do impressions like you, man. I would never be lonely again. You just talk to yourself in different Fucking voices? Fucking A, just think about it. Like, you could sit there and ask Pee Wee for advice and shit. Yeah. But you know, it's not really Pee Wee. It's just me doing the voice of Pee Wee. Doesn't matter. Yeah, it, it does, though. No, it doesn't. Because they, they put you in a home if you start doing the voices to yourself. <laughs> Still do it in front of people, man. This is for like alone time and shit. Yeah. Like you could literally get jerked off by Pee Wee Herman. Yeah, I don't want. <laughs> first of all, first of all, he went to jail. I think about for that. <laughs> think about all the people that could jerk you off. Yes. Charlton Heston. He could. Yes. Uh, o Behave. What's his fuck? <laughs> Austin Powers. Yeah, he could do it. Uh, uh, Ooh. Al Pacino. He could do it. Now, I don't know their names. Yeah, I know you're their noises. <laughs> you're Mr. Catchphrase. 
Ed Wynn could jerk you off. He could, yes. David Bowie. The list goes on and on. I could only get jerked off by Kevin Smith. Yeah. But you, man, you run the gamut. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. You need more lube. <laughs> Adam West. Adam West could jerk me off like he has it. Hi, <laughs> kid. Speaking of which, plug the show. Oh, yeah. Uh, January 28th, uh, three weeks from tonight. On this very stage at 8 p.m., it's the early show, we'll be doing an evening with Adam West right up here. He'll be sitting across from me, and we're going to talk about his entire life and career. Batman and Family Guy and all the other stuff that he's done. We're celebrating his, uh, he's finally getting his star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, so we're raising some money to help pay for that. So. It's one of those things, like, if you had told the 10-year-old the me that I was going to be friends with and sharing a stage with Adam West... Not only that, he wouldn't that you would it. be, if you could go back in time and say to the 10 year old Ralph Garman, like, one day we're going to be grown up Batman, uh, grown up Robin, and help Batman get a star. Yeah. And then 10 year old Ralph would be like, what the fuck happened to our hair? <laughs> <laughs> he would ask me that, yeah. <laughs> 10 year old Ralph would be like, I see we never get out of the leather jacket. <laughs> no. I had a very little leather jacket I used to wear when I was 10. Um, Chad Silverstein. Chad's over there, right, Chad? Hey, Chad, how the are you? The Chad. The Chad came from uh, Auburn, California, near Sacramento. And I made travel plans to come down to L.A. to visit family. I told my dad we had to come see this show. With, with him being of the hobbled variety, I am hoping to capitalize on his gimpiness to parlay it into floor seats. <laughs> what, he used to date Kathy Bates or something? <laughs> is, is dad handy capable? He's got a cane. Oh, I he's see. got a cane. I met you, man. We met in the elevator. We were chit-chatting. We were in the elevator coming up from downstairs, and he goes, if my son knew I was in the elevator with you, uh, and I said, tell you what, and I gave him a buck, and I said, tell your son that I gave him a dollar. <laughs> Just because it would make it a better story, man. <laughs> yeah, the story is, Kevin Smith is cheap. <laughs> That's the story now. I don't know. A free buck is a free buck. In 1953, maybe. You might just give him whatever change you had in your pocket. What are you? I, but I wasn't beholden to give anything. It was not. But if you're gonna I give something, anything. you know, crank out a twenty spot or something. Be a mensch, as you're my a, Jewish friends say. You're a real dick, Ralph. <laughs> that was a beautiful moment, and you're like, you should have given more. Ooh, uh. Make it memorable. Kevin Smith gave me a hundred. Oh, hey. What a guy. <laughs> now I'm Jerry Lewis. <laughs> That's your best one yet. <laughs> Kevin Smith, man of one voices. <laughs> now I'm Jerry Lewis. <laughs> hey, now I'm Jimmy Stewart. Oh, you, you sure are mean, Mr. Potter. <laughs> as long as you say the guy's name, you can get away with it. That's true. <laughs> Um, Chad wants you to know, Kevin, that he supports your band, your uh, policy against Southwest Airlines. Thank you, sir. Chad says, in my return trip to Auburn on Sunday, I will be at the Burbank Airport at 7 a.m. to catch a bus. I will be spending all day from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. on four different buses and trains to show solidarity against Southwest uh -oh, and their person that. of size policies. Yeah, you, might, you might want to take the plane. Yeah. <laughs> I don't hate him that much. <laughs> that's a lot of bus that's time. A, that's a lot of bus time. Yeah. yeah. Him and dad with the, the limp and everything. That's not fair. He stays here. Oh, you live here. Uh, oh. Then Chad's traveling alone on a bus. That's even sadder. <laughs> My dad thinks HBO is going to be on par with most of Kevin's flicks, filth-wise. Could you break, break it to him gently? What kind of debauchery he's in for this evening? No, we'll, we'll surprise him. <laughs> Uh, I Natalie. Never, I never think of the show as being. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt your tangent with some show, Kevin. <laughs> you had something? No, not anymore. <laughs> you want to give me a buck? <laughs> a buck is not what I want to give you right now. <laughs> You're witnessing the final hour of Babylon, everybody. Babble off. Uh, Natalie and RJ, are you guys in the crowd? <laughs> Sorry to make you scream twice. Uh, my boyfriend RJ and I are excited to be attending the January 7th show. We are big fans and celebrating RJ's winning a first place prize at the Slam Dance Film Festival this year. Congrats! 
Congratulations, RJ. Congrats, man. That's awesome. You hiring actors, RJ, by any chance? Contrary to popular belief, I can actually speak dialogue. Keep if me you, in mind for your next project, won't you? If you need a reference, call me. <laughs> Trouble. Are you tucking the tablecloth into your pants? Yeah. I always do. I try it's to not get a cozy. slanket. It <laughs> is. It's a tablecloth. To me, it is. I try to get cozy. I tuck up like a blanket. And <laughs> it's not, it's not, not story sometimes. time. <laughs> it is to me. I do. You never noticed that before? <laughs> no. Always. Very disturbing. I don't know what's going on underneath that tablecloth. <laughs> a little bit of Pee Wee Herman. Yeah. <laughs> RJ here's, and I... here's my Pee Wee Herman impression. I'm Pee Wee Herman. I'm jerking off. <laughs> <laughs> RJ and I will be subtle. Head- it's subtle. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> Natalie adds, RJ and I will be heading to the festival at the end of this month to see his short film on the big screen. Right on, man. It would be what, awesome. Slam dance? You're going to slam dance at the end of this month? Yeah. Right on. Congratulations. So wait, you you got into slam dance and you, it hasn't played yet. It's about to debut this year. I wrote the shorts and they made it and it's about to play. Beautiful. Congrats, Sweet. man. Well, for That's you. fucking awesome. <laughs> A motherfucking filmmaker in the room. A real one. Uh, it would be awesome if you can congratulate him with a musical round of Al Pacino's More Margarita Mix. <laughs> and a few words of encouragement from Mr. Pacino himself. I think we can accommodate. James? Come on now. More margaritas. Come on now. More margaritas. Ooh-ah. Oh, oh, RJ, I want to work with you. Because <laughs> after doing a movie with Adam Sandler, I'll work with anybody. Come on now, with the Jack and Jill. Ooh, ah, uh, oh, that was shit. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't it break your heart a little bit when you saw Al Pacino was doing Jack and Jill? Uh, a little bit. Break her a little bit. I mean, no, I know Al's been on the side I know it's no fucking, career. what was the movie you were in with him? Oh, one no. for the money. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, two for the money. That's right. Yeah. One there for the is money one is the Catherine the mo- Heigl yeah, movie that's, that's coming out. out. It's the prequel to two for the money. <laughs> I did Are two for the money. Are you in that one as well? I'm not in that one, no. It takes place before my character <laughs> put on the leather jacket. <laughs> two for the money is the name of the movie I did with him. Yes. And it was, it was a fine film. Yeah, yeah, yeah no matter what the audiences and the critics said. <laughs> I made one of those. <laughs> Allie Irvine. Allie Irvine. Yeah! Allie, look at all the tattoos you have. I don't mean to draw attention to you if you're self-conscious about them, but you couldn't be because they're all over your body. Can't you're, see stand up. I can't see stand-up. She's not, it's not a sideshow, sir. <laughs> she just happens to be ordain- ordained. Ordained. <laughs> She happens to be ornately decorated. It's very attractive. Sorry, Father. Allie, <laughs> Allie is here to celebrate her 25th birthday. Oh, happy birthday. Oh, right Allie. on, man. Happy birthday. <laughs> Allie adds, I, I was here last week for New Year's Eve Babylon, which was amazing, except I was on the third floor next to the assholes who would not stop shouting. That was my Wait, mom, are you mom talking? and dad. <laughs> my mom and dad. I thought she was talking about us. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, we have to shout. No impersonation is necessary. A happy birthday from you and Kevin will make this night perfect. Well, happy birthday, Happy Allie. birthday, man. 25. What are you going to do with this year? What is it? Go to school? What are you studying? I am uh, illustration and fine art. Illustration, illustration and fine art? and fine art. Right You've on. been practicing on your arms, apparently. <laughs> you do fine work. Let's give her life advice. Life advice? Yeah, yeah. 25, man. That's quarter of a century. That deserves uh, some a piece of advice. More so than, like, happy birthday. Here's the best advice I can give you. Shit I learned in 41 years. Whenever you're sitting at a table with a tablecloth, you tuck it in. Tuck it into your pants. <laughs> Ralph? Uh, when you're sitting at a table with someone, don't look to what they're doing <laughs> beneath the waist. It's better that you don't know. 25? That... that uh, I wish someone had given me advice at 25. I pissed away the better part of my 20s with cocaine and alcohol. Did you really? Yeah. And the better part of my 30s, quite frankly. But 
But it was it was fun. But I I, I could have been more productive. I hear you, man. You I, were making movies. I did. I pissed away the better part of my twenties making clerks and mall <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Oh. What a waste. I was, I was bartending and doing big fat lines and get, getting blown in the liquor room. Is that what would go on? Yeah. What was his name? How dare you, sir. <laughs> I had fun, but I feel like I would be further along in my career if I had been like Allie and been more productive. What, come to this show on your 25th birthday? <laughs> yes. Instead of getting blown in the back room? Yes. I think you did just fine, uh, soldier. <laughs> Uh, how about Ross? Ross and Kylie? Uh, Ross and Kylie and Alex and Brandon and Ashley. Oh, it's just a, just a cornucopia of drunkards over there. How, that is a lot of names from like uh, the, the turn of the century. Yes. Like, we didn't, I didn't go to school with any Alex's, Brandon's, Ashley's, and certainly no fucking Kylie's. <laughs> how about a Ross? You got a, is it Ross? No. No. As a matter of fact, no. It sounds like the cast of a new CW show. <laughs> it does yeah. a little bit, doesn't it? <laughs> Tonight on City Walk Heat, <laughs> Kylie and Ross meet up with Alex and Brandon, hoping Ashley doesn't find out. No, oh, man, it's fucking Kylie, Alex, Brandon, Ash. <laughs> It's a sitcom. Kylie, <laughs> Alex, Brandon, Ash. I Kylie, see. Alex, Brandon, Ash. Let me see if I can do it two seconds from now. Kylie, Alex, Brandon, Ash. That show would work. <laughs> it's memorable. Rolls off the tongue. Kylie, yeah. Alex. I forget it. Already. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Ross writes, my one and only birthday wish. I'm, by the way, they're here to celebrate his birthday. Did I mention that? Oh, we left him out. Yeah, we left him out. Ross. Ross is the writer of the... He's a guest star. He's the (laughs) upstairs neighbor, man. He's like Mr. Furley. He's like, isn't he gay? (laughs) My only one... My one and only birthday wish is to have... Is to have Kevin let me play an extra in his new hockey film. I I already play hockey, so it wouldn't be much of a stretch in terms of acting. Sweet. The only requirement is that I have at least one line so I can tell all my friends and family that I have one more line than Ralph Garman did in Red State. (laughs) See how it's going to be, Ross. <laughs> All righty. Uh, yeah, you can. Shut up. <laughs> if it helps Kevin in his decision, I just found out that I have cancer. Oh, we call it candy here, <laughs> sir. And that the only cure for this particular kind of cancer would be to have a single line as an extra in his <laughs> hockey film which would give me more star power than Ralph Garman, seeing as his one line in Red State mysteriously disappeared. Fuck you, Ross. (laughs) Twice, twice with that shot. (laughs) All kidding aside, Ross writes, seriously, cancer. (laughs) Love, Ross Woods. P.S. Bill Cosby doing the creepy clown song to Kevin may also cure the cancer. (laughs) Well, maybe I don't want to cure your cancer, Ross. Maybe I'd like to see you die painfully in a hospice. <laughs> I gotta say, though, I'm a little intrigued by the notion of the Bill Cosby version of the clown. Well, I'll do it for you, but I won't do it for Ross. Bill Cosby putting on white face. I think we figured out how to break that, man. It just, it, when I do you creepy do it, clown as Cosby, you're not scared. No, it's intriguing. How can you be scared? It's I wanted Dr. to see Huxtable. how far you would take it. You took it to... It's amazing. Oh, stop it. Stop. Stop. <laughs> You can't see, but he's doing the neck, too. He's like, he's doing a bit of Bill Cosby chicken neck. Uh, This next email comes from Kylie, Ross's wife. Did everyone write a fucking email over there? (laughs) Yours is special. Ralph and Kevin, my my husband Ross already emailed you about us being there for his birthday, but I decided to email you as well because we got you presents. You should definitely read my email. One, so I can give you the presents. Two, because I'm wearing a good cleavage shirt. (laughs) We'll be the judge of that, Kylie. That is a pretty good good cleavage shirt. You you have presents? This one's for Kevin. 
That's what is a, it? Pitch it up here, man. That's a little uh, a little cock it's a little dick. keychain. <laughs> that is a uh, that is a life size Kevin Smith cock keychain. <laughs> Look at that. These are cock straws for Kevin to put in his delicious tasting uh, Arnold Palmer. I will use this right now. Oh, don't put a <laughs> cock straw in your drink. It's a fucking novelty this, gift. You don't have to use it. This is thoughtful and practical. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, a creepy clown. Thank you. I like that. It is a clown hand puppet. And the only thing creepier than actual clowns, in my opinion, are clown puppets. <laughs> Look at this dude, we could do anatomically correct clown. <laughs> now that's scary. <laughs> the clown that can blow himself. <laughs> we should make this mandatory. People have to bring a shit every show. This is amazing, thank you. Thank you for the gifts, Kylie. We appreciate yeah, that. Yeah, man. Thank you for your ample bosom as well. Never mind this fucking boring old straw. <laughs> You've got the expandable cock straw. You should do a late night TV infomercial. I'm not a swallower. <laughs> Are you tired drinking out of the same old straws? <laughs> Try new Kevin's with cock straws. <laughs> it's dickalicious. <laughs> it <laughs> makes chocolate milk taste better. That's a couple of nine-year-olds. <laughs> Makes fizzy drinks, jizzy drinks. <laughs> come one, come all. <laughs> Order now and get the new ball cups. <laughs> we get emails from around the world. We have some tonight. James. Featuring Kevin's reactions. Hi, Ralph and Kev. I was watching some of the special features on the Doctor Who Series 5 DVD set. And during the first minute and a half, this is the title screen they used to introduce Karen Gillan's portion of the video diaries. Are you a Doctor Who fan at all? You a uh, I'm not. I would not say I'm a hardcore uh, Whovian, if you will. Or whatever. I am. I love. But I, I dig. The, I dig it a, a bunch. The Christmas special this year, I thought was amazing. I don't know if you caught that. Or I not, did but not. Great stuff. Anyway, uh, Karen Gillian, Gillian plays uh, his companion on the show. Doctor always has a companion. On the current edition. On the current edition. She plays yeah. Amy Pond on that show. Okay. Uh, I thought it was a nice nod to our man Kevin Smith by the people at Doctor Who, and I thought, since you're both fans of the show, you might like it. Uh, Marvin Aguilar sent this in. This is the actual screen still from the section where they talk about her. Oh, Look at that. That's cute. Says chasing Amy. You have joined the, the, the common lexicon. Yeah, that's true. They made a porn of it once. Did they really? Yeah, 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 yeah. It was called Chasing Asia. It was for, uh, the actress' name was Asia Carrera. Oh, it had yeah. nothing to do with the movie, but it was close enough, you know. Have they made other porn the, versions yeah, of a, your... there is uh, currently a Mall Rats with a Z, and I got excited, but it has nothing to do with our movie either. No. Way different version of the stink palm in that movie. Oh, I bet. <laughs> Does uh, one of the leads of that movie ignore you at parties too, or just uh, <laughs> is it just the real one? Only if his wife's around. <laughs> this email comes from uh, Mason. My name is Mason. I just started college last fall attending the University of Delaware. Go mud hens, I think. <laughs> I'm not sure what the mascot is. I think Ralph is was having a senior moment. <laughs> <laughs> trying to think of their mascot. I think it's the mud hens. Is it? Blue hens? Blue hens, maybe. Okay. Uh, found myself the reserved nerdy type having several bad Saturday nights. Aww. 
upon listening to your Newsy podcast, I realized if I could get some common HBO fans, I could really start to enjoy the entertainment you two so graciously give away. So I humbly request that you relay a message for me. If anyone from the University of Delaware listens to this podcast and wants to discuss it with other listeners, please meet me in front of the Russell Dining Hall at 7 p.m. on Friday, February 10th for dinner. That's fucking pathetic. <laughs> no, it's not. It's scary. Because he says for dinner, and what he means is he's going to eat your fucking brain. He's going to like, let's talk about Babel. You're going to wake up. He's going to eat your brain like fucking Hannibal Lecter, man, and feed you a piece. Remember that part? Yeah, that was in the sequel. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, his name is Mason Francis. You can email him. He wants you to email him if you go to University of Delaware at uh, Z-E-N-I-E-R, Zenier at U-D-E-L dot E-D-U. That's where you can reach him. That is, I think that's, that's like message in a bottle, man. It's a little sad. No, it's cute. It's nice reaching out. It's more sad than cute. Though. Is it? Yeah, yeah. I hope that someone gets my... Message in a bottle. Well, if you go to the University of Delaware, uh, look up Mason and be his friend because he's. <laughs> he still wears underoos. I'm guessing I got the Mason suburban does. Family morning. Okay, all right. We got the PS here. Synchronicity. Synchronicity. <laughs> I was going to keep going through the whole out. PS, if you don't decide to use this email, you can both fuck off. For not taking three minutes to help an antisocial kid make some friends. Well, with an attitude like that, Mason, I can't understand why you don't have tons of friends. <laughs> I like it. That's a good idea. I hope it works out. Let's hear a follow-up. He needs to write back All right, Mason, to write see if anybody... February 10th is like a month away, though. He's given them lots of time to contact him. So okay. I can just see him February 10th standing in front of the Russell Dining Hall on campus. <laughs> And then an hour after nobody comes, he's on the roof of the Russell Dining yeah. Hall <laughs> with a sniper rifle. You look like Ralph Garman. <laughs> you look like Ralph Garman. You hear that? And people are like, why don't you shoot at Kevin Smith? He's a wider target. <laughs> you hear that? Or at 7.05 on Friday, February 10th, he's going to have the biggest wedgie you've ever seen in your life. Just... I hope uh, it works out, man. I hope it's like fucking Sleepless in Seattle. He meets a chick. They fall in love. They show up here on their honeymoon. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah it could be that. Doesn't, he doesn't have to be a loser. He, he doesn't. Mason, I'm sorry. You're, you're a good, good person. <laughs> Sean Watson, another uh, college student, writes from Marion, Iowa. I love the show. I'm majoring in criminal justice. I'm right on, man, like Batman. I'm pretty sure Batman didn't major in criminal justice. He could have, but he didn't. He could have. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's smart enough. He just never went for the degree because right. he was learning criminology and shit in the Batcave. That's right. He didn't go That's to Hudson Batman. University to uh, yeah, follow yeah. up on his studies. Uh, I am taking a class on sex offenders, and my professor showed us a movie entitled Kinsey starring Liam Neeson. I had never heard of it before today. However, there's a scene in which Neeson's character, accompanied by his wife, go to the doctor to solve a sex problem they're having. Apparently, when they have sex, it hurts too much. The doctor asks Liam Neeson how big his cock is and pulls out a ruler. His wife indicates that the ruler is not long enough to depict the length of Liam Neeson's cock. I could not stop laughing as I ran through all the Liam Neeson cock jokes in my head. It got to the point that my professor had to excuse me from the class until I could compose myself. <laughs> So how big is Liam Neeson's cock? Big enough to get me kicked out of class. <laughs> Less of a joke, more of a fact, he adds. Thanks for ruining my college education, dicks. <laughs> like it's our fault you can't compose yourself, John Watson. I would Marion like to uh, add to that list, man. I know we've always celebrated, or I at least have always celebrated the cock of Liam Neeson, but yes. recently, I saw a motion picture, Ralph, where there was a cock on display that was so luscious. It was, it was gigantic. It looked like a fucking an elephant trunk, but a cute baby elephant trunk, which is still way bigger than a cock. But it's like, you know, when you saw it, you weren't threatened. All you heard was like, do 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 it's this movie called Shame. Oh, yeah. It's fucking young Magneto, dude. It's what's Michael name? Fassbender? Michael Fassbender has a cock that would fucking bend time and space. That's it, why he's Fassbender. It's, oh, my God. It, it's, I'm not even kidding, dude. I, I literally paused it on a big screen TV, and I went up there and did this test and, like, put it all over his dick like I'm crushing your nuts. I put it over his dick like this, right. and then I put it from his fucking knee to his leg. Mm -hmm. Same length. 
It's huge. You see his dick up and down that movie, man, and it's loud and fucking proud. If I was that dude, I would only make movies where my dick was being shown. No wonder he agreed to full frontal nudity. No kidding, man. No kidding. This dude should be getting a lot bigger roles. <laughs> and a lot bigger holes. Because my God, I don't I don't envy anybody as to fuck this man. Michael <laughs> Michael Assbender, they should call him. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Thank you so much for having that at the ready. And lastly, this email comes from Scotland. Uh, we've talked about it on the show before, but apparently there are some uh, just uh, just wrong-headed Scotsmen who are making a fan film based on this podcast Yes. called Babylon Begins, and they've been filling us in on every stage of their production. They sent us some stills from the set, from the actual film yes. this week. Uh, apparently, I'm not sure, we showed uh, a couple weeks ago, we showed the two actors who were playing us in the film. This is from a scene in the film. And they didn't tell me exactly what it was, but I get the sense it's sort of a pre-show meeting before we do this show. It's them talking. Okay. Just like, you know, the pre-show meetings we have here. Yeah, yeah. When I'm waiting for you to show up and you run <laughs> up and 30 seconds later we come on stage. The, it's not so much a pre-show meeting as a will he show <laughs> meeting. That's right. Here's a shot of uh, fake Kevin. This is the actor playing Kevin, and apparently... <laughs> As you can tell, he's very, uh, very focused, very intent. It, it bums me out because he, it looks like he's also very thin. He's, it just, I look at him like, I wish I looked like that guy. He's got that intense Kevin Smith look in his face. We're actually working out some comedy bits before the show. Yes. And this next shot is my reaction to your conversation, which is pretty lifelike as well. <laughs> That's the Ralph character downing an entire bottle of Jack Daniels while the conversation is going on, and I resent that. <laughs> I resent it because he gets to drink up out of the bottle while I have to use a glass, and I don't think that's fair for yeah, Faith yeah, Ralph yeah. to get all the benefits. Well, now you can, when they screen the movie, you can be like, there's no truth in this art. That's right. I would only drink from a glass. A bottle is for a rummy. And uh, <laughs> a lot of people emailed this week. <laughs> rummy. I know. I, I went too far back. <laughs> back to the 20s. Are you a hobo and a boxcar? Yeah, car? I know. 23 skidoo and all that. Uh, a lot of emails this week to let me know that David Bowie's birthday is tomorrow. Uh, apparently, uh, January 8th is... How old? Anybody know? Is Bowie. He's 65. 65 is that right? 65 years old tomorrow. So he's officially a senior citizen. He's officially a senior citizen. Wow, he gets the discount. He gets getting the movies cheaper. Yeah, finally. He can afford to go to the movies. <laughs> uh, a lot of people were asking if I would give him a tribute, so I think it's only appropriate since I've, well, stolen the man's voice for so long to give him a little birthday shout-out. So, James, can you hit me with that? Tomorrow is my birthday. I will be 65. I've got a life full of necklace. I've fallen and can't get up. I'm drinking lots of Ensure and taking Metamucil. I can't fuck Iman anymore without a Viagra pill. I'm turning 65. I am a senior citizen. I get in the movies for discounts and I ride the bus for less than you. I'm turning 65. I think Kevin just came all over the floor. I'm done. <laughs> You're done. Yeah. I'm all spent. <laughs> Sometimes I think you keep that song going real long until I come. Well, I'm a, uh, I'm a thoughtful and generous lover, if nothing else. <laughs> I lost my entire fucking tablecloth. I'm sorry you. about that. <laughs> now you need it more than ever. I do. I really do. Every week we take a look at some A-list actors turning in Z-list performances. It's good actors gone bad. It's called Exquisite Acting. To be or not to be, that is the question. Welcome to the world of Exquisite Acting with Ralph Garman and Kevin Smith. <laughs> um, I can only assume this week a lot of people were watching this particular movie over the holidays because this came in uh, by the droves people were talking about this particular scene. Must have been on TV. In this board. Must have been. It's called Santa Claus. The movie. The movie, yeah. With, uh, I guess, the, the Salkins produced, the guys who brought us Superman, yep. right? They took another icon and made a big movie out of it. It was not a big success. It didn't work out for him. No. Uh, Dudley Moore plays an elf. Yes. And John Lithgow, I think, was the bad guy. He is the bad guy. He is the owner of a toy company, and... Uh, <laughs> Dudley Moore gets expelled from the North Pole because he pisses off Santa Claus. He fucks Mrs. Claus or something. I don't know the exact story. I've never seen the film. 
But he goes to the big city and he, he tells John Lithgow, the toy maker, that he's going to make toys for him. Right. And that he wants to give them away like Santa Claus does. And that's where we pick up this scene. Watch John Lithgow's performance in Santa Claus. How many workers does this uh, product require? Just me? What? No payroll? Well, my needs are simple. A bowl of stew, heavy on the dill, a cold place to sleep. Uh -huh. What would it cost? Cost? Cost who? Uh, the people who, who buy the toy. Well, nothing. We're going to give them away free. <laughs> oh. Oh, that's fantastic. How do you turn your face so red so fast? For free! <laughs> For free! Awesome. How do you turn your face so red? That's fantastic. I wish I could turn my face so red like that. <laughs> they did the remake, we're in. Yeah, all right. Oh, this is the sad part of the show. Oh, man. Every week we have to say goodbye to some people in show business who deserve to be acknowledged because they accomplished a lot. Whether they're here for a short time or a long time, it's the Tinseltown Stips. And now, another edition of Tinseltown Stips. They will be missed. Tough one this week. Angelo Bowers was a comedian locally here in Los Angeles. Sad story. Very funny comedian. He was uh, just... A comedian's comedian, as they say. Yeah, he performed a lot locally. He wasn't really a big name, wasn't well-known, but comics would go and see him and say, this guy's a genius, he does mm -hmm. great work. He was killed by a hit-and-run driver on uh, Saturday the, the 3rd. It, it, the guy was drunk. 21-year-old was drunk behind the wheel. Oh, they caught him? They caught him, yeah. Uh, he had two accidents in five minutes. Hit somebody, hit and run, the first accident, then kept going and had a second accident five minutes later, and that was the one Angelo was in where he was killed. And it was a Jeep, I think, or yeah. something like that. So uh, he passed away from his injuries. The comic that he was with, Josh Adam Myers, who's another comedian here locally, is still in the hospital, and they are, uh, I think they've got a Twitter site up or a, a website up for help with his uh, medical expenses. Yeah, and, and also there's a Twitter site up, I think it's Angelo's Jokes or something like that. It is, at Angelo's Jokes. Yeah. Uh, where essentially there, uh, he didn't have, he, he was such a comics comic, he was so pure, so to speak. He didn't have a Twitter account or a Facebook, he didn't do any of that stuff. Right. So they feel like a lot of his stuff is gone, he didn't have an album or anything like that, so a lot of his material is just kind of now going to be lost for the ages. So they were asking everybody who remembered any of his stuff to put it up on the site with that address. And I think it's Angelo's jokes. Yeah, sad news. Uh, the, the, uh, the driver, the drunk driver, is going to be booked on murder charges once his medical condition improves. He was injured as well. So I'm glad they're taking really good care of him in the hospital so that they can put him on trial for murder and then put him in jail for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. There was one of the jokes I saw on uh, that I thought, I'm going to butcher it because I don't, I, I, I saw it and I remembered it, but bear with me as I put it together. This is one of Angelo's jokes. He said, um, um, everyone thinks I'm Jewish at this acting class I go to. Um, it's at Temple Shalom, and my teacher is Rabbi Mark or something like that. It's a, it's a way homer. <laughs> you know, a little cerebral. But I thought that was a very funny joke. A lot of our British listeners wrote in and uh, said they wanted to mention uh, Bob Holness. He was the host of a game show called Blockbusters in the UK for many, many years. He died at the age of 83 this week. Um, he worked a bunch in television and radio, but he's best known outside of this game show that he did as being the second actor ever to portray James Bond. He did a radio play based on the book Moonraker. It was only the second time anyone ever played James Bond, 1956, before they even started the movies. The book Moonraker was written in 1950. Oh, almost all the books were written before they started Even making Moonraker, the movies. Moonraker, though? Yeah, yeah. Wow. So uh, he passed away this week. You know who the first actor ever played uh, James Bond was? Um, well... It was a TV movie. It was a TV movie. Um, uh, no. On CBS, 1954. Barry Nelson was the guy's name. Oh, I don't know that. Yeah. I remember, uh, remember The Shining? Woody Allen played him once. Yeah. Right? Remember The Shining? Yes. The guy who hires Jack Nicholson to take over the hotel? Yeah, That's yeah, the yeah. actor, Barry Nelson. Yeah, he played Get out of yeah. here. That guy played Yeah, first. they did an American version of James Bond in 1954 on CBS, and it was uh, Casino Royale. Mm -hmm. But they Americanized him. They called him Jimmy Bond, and he was an American secret agent. Hey, Jimmy, hey, Jimmy Bond, see? Jimmy Bond, hey, over there. I got 21. Hey. I win, see? Pay me. <laughs> didn't, didn't that go over? <laughs> Nearly as fun. And lastly, uh, this week, Bob Anderson died. You may not know the name, but you know this man's work. He was a former British Olympic swordsman 
who died at the age of 89 this week. He was, uh, he was an award, he was a gold medal winner in the Olympics, but went on to choreograph and stage swordplay scenes in movies for the rest of his career. Mm -hmm. He did movies from Rush With Love, Die Another Day, the James Bond movies, uh, Princess Bride, Legend of Zorro, Lord of the Rings trilogy, Pirates of the Caribbean, the first one. But he's best known, and he wouldn't be known at all if it wasn't for Mark Hamill, he was Darth Vader during the lightsaber fights. He did all of, light, of the Darth Vader's lightsaber battles. And George Lucas never wanted to acknowledge him, wanted to keep the mystery, wanted people to believe that it was just David Prowse, I guess, in the costume, right? Who was yeah, doing yeah. that. But Mark Hamill stepped forward one day in an interview in 1983 and said, Bob Anderson was the guy who did all Vader's fights, and it's time that he should be known. Um, he added, he worked so bloody hard that he deserves some recognition. To which I say, Mark Hamill, you are not British. Stop saying bloody. Mm. Big bucket of win, man. There's yeah. a guy who's, uh, got, all of us have been influenced by it to some degree. We've all had, well, maybe not this generation, but my generation, we all had a lightsaber fight. Yeah. So we all imitated that guy's behavior at one you point. You want to see a little bit of his work from Empire well, Strikes yeah, Back? Yeah, 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 fuck yeah. Here's a little clip. He could fly too. He flew down those steps. You see that? Let's fucking chuck the rest of the show. Just keep watching. Don't man. you want to watch the rest oh, of it when you see that much? That movie's so fucking good. You don't even have to like Star Wars movies to like The Empire Strikes Back. Yeah, it's, 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 it's pretty it's a good. damn operatic. It's a wonderful film. It is a wonderful film. And while we're talking about Star Wars. Uh, it actually comes up in this week's edition of Shit That Should Not Be. Careful shit we should not see. Here's some shit that should not be. <laughs> Ralph and Kevin, this starts. I wanted to share this with you as one of my co-workers told me about this just today. Apparently people have been talking about it for years, but I never heard about it before, so who knows, maybe you didn't either. This comes from Bart. Of course, shit that should not be is uh, when we take a look at movies where mistakes slip through, uh, bloopers that someone should have caught at some stage in the filmmaking but yet made their way to the screen. This is different because this was intentionally put there, and people have just started catching it, I guess, for the past couple years. <laughs> right, Mr. Clown? Yeah. Uh, this is from Star Trek, J.J. Abrams' Star Trek, the reboot of the Star Trek franchise. Get, get, get Mr. Clown out of my crotch. <laughs> And I didn't know this, but with all the crosstalk lately between Star Wars and Star Trek about what's better between uh, <laughs> William Shatner and Carrie Fisher and stuff, I thought this was interesting that I did not know a Star Wars character makes a cameo in Star Trek. Yeah. Are you familiar with that? No, no, I no. I didn't know about it. No, I'm not so we sure. brought the footage in. I'm going to bring my trusty laser pointer around. I'm going to show you this footage real quick. And you will see in this scene, uh, the Enterprise, uh, Captain Christopher Pike is at the helm at this point. That's uh, Bruce Greenwood. They're, they're steering through a bunch of wreckage, and there's starships being blown apart, and there's all kinds of flotsam and jetsam and space flying around. And across the view screen of the Enterprise, you see a Star Wars character. I think you'll be surprised to know that was in there. Okay. Let's take a look at the footage. This is on a computer here, so I don't think there's any audio, but here it is coming in here. We had to do this to slow it down. It's, here's the Enterprise, it's crashing through stuff, and then there's Spock, he's gay, I didn't know that. And <laughs> here it is, now we're gonna, we're gonna zoom in over here. We're gonna get in real close. I don't know if you can see it or not, right there. R2-D2, yeah, R2-D2's floating around in space. That means the Enterprise hit Luke Skywalker's ship. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, if that, does that really count as shit that should not be? I don't think they should cross paths. You don't cross the streams, man. You don't cross Star Wars and Star Trek. Something bad will happen. Yeah, I think George Lucas is going to sue somebody. That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> It'll be very bad. All right, it's time to take a look at the week's big storylines in entertainment news with the HBO headlines. Give me head, give me head, give me headlines. And give me head. <laughs> Congratulations to Justin Timberlake and Jessica Biel. They're engaged. Is that right? Yeah. Right on. Yeah, apparently. Were they, have they been dating? They've been dating since 2007. 
uh, like nonstop? They never no, they had a breakup you? earlier uh, in, in the past year. I was going to say, because she called me. Yeah, she did. <laughs> But Justin realized he couldn't live without her, and they were in Jackson, Wyoming over the holidays. And you know Jackson, Wyoming is the city of romance. <laughs> yeah, man. That's definitely and so place. he uh, proposed to her there while they were snowboarding, and she said yes. And uh, so now they're going to be married forever and ever and ever, just like Russell Brand and Katy Perry. <laughs> Do you think there'll be a prenup in this situation? Oh, yes. Really? Yeah. He wouldn't want to just jump in there, fucking dive in, just be like, you know what? If it doesn't work, it doesn't work, but I got to believe. But if it doesn't, if it, if it works, then there's no harm, no foul. Doesn't matter. You'll never use that prenup, right? I know, but then there's always in the back of your head, like you don't trust me, man. You made me sign some fucking paper. <laughs> Why do you have a prenup? Or something? No, I don't have a prenup, but I have no money. It doesn't make a difference. <laughs> He's got a ton of money. Why not protect well, it? Well, she's got some money too. Right. So let's all protect all our monies. Little prenup. Yeah, but if you're like, I got to protect my money from you. What are you putting your dick in that person for? You know. They're not protecting your vagina from her. You're protecting your money from her. <laughs> I don't know. It just seems weird to me. All right. Sinead O'Connor. Here's a perfect example. Kay. Sinead O'Connor got married 18 days later. It's all off. It's over. Forget about it. Okay. Fair well, enough. Well, except for this week. Apparently, they're back together again. <laughs> Sinead O'Connor talked about getting divorced from her husband of 18 days, Barry Herridge, last week. But this week, they've decided to give it another go. Why? Because they fucked. That's what she tweeted. Guess who had a mad love affair with my own husband last night, she tweeted this week. Um, her. Yes. <laughs> Spent beautiful evening of lovemaking with nine other than husband. I think she means none other than husband. <laughs> did, it, did it say nine? It said nine other. Yeah, she needs the spell check. <laughs> that would be a tiresome night of fucking... Your husband and nine others? Who turned up angelically. We decided to be boyfriend and girlfriend. Oh, it's so nice when husband and wife decide to be boyfriend and girlfriend. Yeah. We decided to be boyfriend and girlfriend again and stay married. But we did rush into it, so we're going to return to boyfriend and girlfriend, she tweeted. Then she tweeted again. I be sickingly happy and go counseling and move in like a year like regular people. I'm giving you the literal translation here from the Twitter. But stay married, and we all in love, and fuck every other day. Me husband is big hairy caveman, and came to claim me with his club. And now I'm in caveland. Yay, we both go panto. So me all happy. Me love me hubby, and he love me, and fuck who no like it. When did she become Bizarro Sinead? <laughs> me no Sinead, me Bizarro Sinead. <laughs> me no marry husband, now boyfriend, good go. Girlfriend, bad bye, me am Sinead O'Connor. <laughs> so they apparently are going to live separately. They may move in together in about a year, but they're just going to date for now as husband and wife. Right on, all right, fair enough. I, if it, Whatever makes it work for him, I guess. Nothing compares to her, that's all I'm saying. When it comes <laughs> to oh, Stop it! Ooh, file that shit, quick. <laughs> hey, file. Lindsay Lohan's in the news, what a surprise. File it in the clown. <laughs> it's time for our weekly Lindsay Lohan update. Lindsay Lohan, why don't you come to your senses? I'm starting to feel bad for Lindsay. Why? She, she can't get a break. Times are tough. She started off 2012 in a bad way. On Sunday, a 64-year-old stranger came banging at her door demanding to talk to her. She refused. His name was Lonnie Short. He's 64 years old. He said he must speak with her. She called the authorities. It turns out this 64-year-old man is a very good friend of her stalker, David Kokorian. <laughs> He said to police, I just need to explain some things to Lindsay about David. See, this guy's a good friend. He's a good stalker friend. He yeah. wanted to go to the stalker subject and explain things to her. Yeah, he's like, that guy's not a stalker. No. And she's like, you are. He's like, what, me? I'm the stalker? I'm the friend of the stalker. Yeah, I'm trying to explain what's going on. He wanted to explain some things to her with duct tape and a box opener <laughs> and uh, some lubricant and some Drano and I don't know what happened. But the cops showed up and now she has a uh, restraining order against him. See, it's hard to be Lindsay Lohan. Harder to be that guy right about now. That's true. Because he's, he's got a message. You, know, you just wanted to get in there and be like, come with me if you want to live. <laughs> he's coming from the past yeah. to save Lindsay Lohan. 
Uh, the year-end lists are still coming out, even as we enter into the new year. Uh, babynames.com has announced the worst celebrity-given baby names of the year. It's a tie for number one between Alicia Silverstone and Mariah Carey. Alicia Silverstone named her son Bear Blue. That's cute, man. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the big blue house. Yeah, but he's not, he's not a children's show character. He's a person. Yeah, yeah, but when he gets older, he can change it. He's like, just call me Double B, bitch. Yeah. They're like, why Double B? He's like, my mother named me Bear Blue. Bear Blue. <laughs> she was the lady from Clueless. <laughs> His middle name Blue, by the way, is spelled B-L-U. Could have been worse. Could have been B-L-E-W, yeah, but still. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> still. I like and, it. Bear Blue, man. And of course, Mariah Carey. Bear Blue, I'm Kev Fat. How are you? <laughs> this is Ralph Drunk. And Mariah Carey named her son Moroccan Scott Cannon. Moroccan Scott Cannon. Sounds like a DJ at an oldie station. <laughs> no, I believe Moroccan Scott Cannon composed the Star Spangled Banner. I believe he did, yes. Uh, the world's uh, worst baby name given to a daughter by a celebrity went to Zuzu Peterson, who is the daughter of former Top Chef Just Desserts contestant Tanya Peterson. Don't you have to actually be a celebrity in this list at all? <laughs> She's the winner of Top Chef Just Desserts. Not the whole Top Chef, just right. the dessert episode. Right. Uh, other worst names on the list, Mirabella Bunny. That is Brian Adams' daughter's name. Ooh, cuts like a knife. <laughs> but, <laughs> feels so right. <laughs> I guess when you really, really love a woman, you would just name <laughs> your daughter anything, really. Yeah. Uh, maybe back in the summer of 69, but... <laughs> And Je Kevin James named his son Canon James. What is the Canon? Where did Canon become so popular? It, does it, is it spelled like the other Canon? No, it's spelled with a K. Canon with a K. You gotta K. be a gay porn star to call yourself Canon with a K. <laughs> yeah, I'm Canon. <laughs> Speaking of Canons, Nick Cannon is in the hospital. And not by America's Got Talent competitors who beat him for being such a horrible host. No, he has a mild kidney failure, says his wife, Mariah Carey. Don't. <laughs> Gentlemen cheering for kidney failure. <laughs> Nick Cannon in an Aspen, Colorado hospital after suffering from mild kidney failure, he writes. Yeah, how can kidney failure be minor? Isn't it kind of important to have your kidneys work? Nah, I got two. All right. Uh, this according to his wife, Mariah Carey, who tweeted the following message. This is us in the hospital. Role reversal. Last year it was me attached to the machines after having dem babies. She has dem babies? <laughs> I hear no. you can't get rid of that, no, man. That's like when you get candy. It's no, just no, over, I, man. I Done. think she means dem babies like the dem babies I had, those twins. Oh, I thought it was a condition. No, it's not a condition. But somehow, immediately she managed to turn the situation around and make it about her in one tweet. I'm Humble very brag. impressed. They tried, to, brag, they, call that. they tried to kick me out of the hospital, but here I am, pond to bed with Mr. C, and she tweeted this picture of uh, Nick Cannon suffering, writhing in pain with failing kidneys while she snuggles up next to him in the, uh, the hospital bed with him. Just look at his face. He's like, get the fuck out of this bed and take this hat off of me. I don't care you want to tweet your picture. Uh, my <laughs> kidneys are failing. My piss organ is hurt. <laughs> my pissy organs hurt. Stop taking pictures of me. I ain't got no vision of love. <laughs> All I want for Christmas is you out of my bed. <laughs> she tweeted again, we're doing okay, but stranded in Aspen. Oh, fuck you. <laughs> Guys, kidneys are shutting down. You're bitching about where you're stuck. And you're in Aspen. A lot of rich people live there. Maybe it was the altitude. If he just goes down the hill, his kidney will be fine again. <laughs> Maybe it will be. Uh, Celebrity Apprentice, reality show news. They just announced their list of uh, Celebrity Apprentice contestants who will be battling to see who will work for Donald Trump. Here's your Celebrity Apprentice list. Uh, February 12th on, on NBC at debuts. Clay Aiken will be competing. Once again, celebrity is a is a uh, relative term no, here for the wait, celebrity that, apprentice. Even I know in that dude, he was on uh, American Idol. American Idol, yes. He uh, he uh, he came in second, I think, on American Idol. Oh, really? Who yeah. won? Who was first? Uh, Ruben Studdard, if I'm not mistaken. Is he on the show? He is not on the show. No. <laughs> I guess Clay Higgins doing pretty good. I guess he is. 
Lou Ferrigno is on the show this season. Right on. Don't get him angry. <laughs> you wouldn't like him when he's angry. Oh, shit, no. I really want to be in Oh, don't do that. No. That's the Hulk. Me the time, me the time. I really hope no. you don't fire me. Because I really, I really want to be in <laughs> oh, the Oh, that makes it sadder. Stop it. <laughs> I tried my best in the talents to really bring as much money as I could, and I just hope you won't find me, Mr. Trump. <laughs> I'm sorry, Lou, but you're fired. I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. When we done? <laughs> Lou, you're fired. Do not get it again. I'm sorry. One more now. <laughs> Lou, you're fired. Sorry. Did anyone tell you what he's saying? George Takei of Star, Star Trek fame. Oh, Mr. Yeah. Sulu. Oh, my. Oh, my. Lou Ferrigno. <laughs> <laughs> Set phasers for boner. <laughs> Uh, some of the women, Teresa Judice. Come on, Teresa Judice. She invented the dreidel. <laughs> You'll get that on the way home. Eh? Ask your Jewish friends about it. You'll be very impressed. Uh, she's on Real Housewives of New Jersey, apparently. Yeah. Uh, Victoria Gotti, daughter of crime boss John Gotti. Going across her. Is that, yeah, I was going to say, shouldn't she just win by default right <laughs> yes. away? Uh, Debbie Gibson, pop star Debbie Gibson. Oh, that's out of the blue. Yeah. <laughs> Think she's going to win? Only in her dreams. <laughs> <laughs> Aubrey o well, we got a bunch of those tonight. This yeah, is a record. Yeah, yeah. Electric uh, Aubrey O'Day, she's a pop star, I guess. Uh, Tia Carrera. T Tia Carrera, she's uh, Wayne's World. Wayne's World, right? yeah. And she does a, she does a show with... Uh, our, our landlord from time to time. John Lovitz. Yeah, 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 they're good friends. Cheryl Teagues, model Cheryl Teagues. Okay. Former supermodel Cheryl Teagues. Had the poster. I had the boner. <laughs> no, I meant I had the poster. I put a hole in it and fucked it. <laughs> oh, My mother. Remember that me. uh, the Sports Illustrated swimsuit issue she did, yeah. where she was wearing like a like a mesh like bathing suit. I remember I did that issue too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Patricia. Patricia Velasquez. Who's that? Uh, as you can tell, she's a big hit with the with the fans. She apparently is the first. How many first fucking people are on this show? How many people are? I've never watched it. How many contestants do they start off with? Uh, I don't have an exact number here. Feels like a lot. There's you a lot. You just keep going and going. Uh, Patricia Velasquez is a Brazilian supermodel. I think she's a known bisexual. Had a long time affair with uh, Sandra Bernhard. Remember her, the yeah, lesbian yeah, yeah. comedian? Yeah. 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 She's uh, she couldn't do better. I'm just saying. Miss Universe, Diana Torres, uh, excuse me, uh, Mendoza. <laughs> I don't know where I got Torres from. <laughs> Comedian Lisa Lampanelli, Penn Gillette, Paul Toodle, senior of American Chopper, Arsenio Hall. <laughs> the dog pound. Oh my here God. For Arsenio. Somewhere he's rolling a tear that you oh, remember. He's so man. happy. Can you imagine? Oh my God, that's touching. Um, race car driver Michael Andretti, <laughs> rock star D. Snyder. And uh, podcaster comedian Adam Carolla will be doing the uh, right on, man. Go. Full list. Celebrity Apprentice. That's it. That's the whole list right there. That's a lot of contestants. So yeah. what is the idea? They all start one by one. He fires them. And then yeah. They, they all have to compete in tasks and try to raise money for charity and stuff. And then Donald Trump comes in and uh, waves his hair at him or something. And they all go. <laughs> he whips his hair back and forth. And <laughs> While we're talking about reality shows, Mackenzie Phillips, who was on Celebrity Rehab, of course, from One Day at a Time. She's on a new uh, trouble-based reality show that's going to be on Oprah Winfrey's network. It's called Extreme Clutter. I'm glad to see Oprah Winfrey is raising the bar of television on her own network with Extreme Clutter. And that's just a, a, one of those You shows. have a real messy... Like a hoarder kind of thing. Yeah. She says that she started collecting stuff when she got on the wagon, stopped doing drugs... She started collecting stuff, and now her house is un is uh, un 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 uncluterable. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. Um, okay, so she's gonna host the show, and then no, she's go gonna be on it. She's got a problem. They have to. Oh, so it's not even she's clutter her. She's not the host. She's mm -mm. just a patient or something. Yeah, she's the first celebrity guest on Extreme Clutter. Right on. Extreme Clutter. 
There should be like shit on fire and stuff if your house if it's extreme clutter. <laughs> it's like people jumping motorcycles over your shit if it's extreme clutter. I'm like, why won't you throw out that burning I bet it's tire? <laughs> like I can't. It's mine. But it's not extreme though. I'm sure it's not extreme. But it's just like books and shit. It's not extreme. Extreme clutter would be like a billion used rubbers. Yes, that's extreme. And they're like, don't look, don't take them. They're my babies. <laughs> They got a right to life. <laughs> Billions of them. Director David O. Russell's in trouble. He, of course... Uh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's the reaction we all had. It's David's cousin up there didn't hear about it, yeah. <laughs> David O. Russell's out of the in building. trouble. Holy shit. He directed, of course, The Fighter. Yes. He did uh, Flirting hey, with way Disaster. Way back in the day. He was at Sundance, same year we were with Clerks, 1994. He uh, debuted with a movie called Spanking the Monkey. Yeah, that was his And right after that, he did a movie called uh, Flirting with Disaster, um, Three Kings. Yeah. That's an awesome movie. He's, he's a really good filmmaker. Uh, Flirting with Disaster, of course, was, if you've never seen it, sort of a weird psychosexual movie about people with weird peccadilloes and family Early issues. Early Ben Stiller, too, before he was mega movie star. Ben That's Stiller. right. Uh, apparently, David o. Russell has his own weird family sexual peccadilloes. He uh, was in trouble with the police in Florida for molesting his 19-year-old transgender niece in a Florida gym. They wait, were wait, 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 wait. <laughs> I know there's a lot to absorb in this, yeah, in this I, headline. We have to wrap our heads around this step by step. So follow us if you can. That's, uh, that is, yeah, I am way follow too high. Follow the bouncing ball <laughs> as we talk about this headline. David, David o. o. Russell, the director, is in trouble. Was being interviewed by the Florida police in Broward County for groping his 19-year-old transgender niece in a Florida gym at a hotel. It was a hotel gym in Florida. Let's go backwards. A hotel gym in Florida where he groped his 19-year-old transgender niece. Now, when you say transgender... Used to be his nephew. Is now his niece. And, and he, he grabbed his niece's... Well, let me get into the, the meat of the story. His niece, who now goes by the name of Nicole Peliquin, used okay. to be Nicholas Peliquin, okay, fair enough. said Choice. to the Broward County Sheriff's Office that while they were working out, David O. Russell offered to help her with her ab exercises. His hands moved down to her private parts, she says. Then oh, no. Russell slipped his hands under her shirt and felt her breasts that she has grown due to some hormonal right, activity. Right. I'm sorry, my pre-op? She's pre-op. She has not had the full uh, surgery to, to transfer from uh, male to female yet. Okay. Here's a picture of Nicole, by the way. You want to take a look at her. She looks every bit the woman. She looks every bit the white trash Florida woman, but still, she's every bit the woman. She's cute. She is cute. Yeah, she's very cute. Now you can't blame them, right? No. No, no, that's not what I meant. That's not what that's I meant at all. That's a relative, for heaven's sake. So the uh, sheriffs come to him and say, 19, look. 19, like, oh, every piece of this is, is wrong. Fucking <laughs> wrong, man. I bet if it's 19, but she's your niece. Now, that's not fair, sir. <laughs> um, now, Russell was interviewed by the sheriffs, and he said, my niece was acting very pro provocatively towards me. That was his answer. She invited me to feel her breasts, he told the sheriffs. I have to admit, I was curious about her breast enhancement, he added. David Russell emphatically denied he did anything wrong. <laughs> he also said that she made him pinky swear about the breast touching part. Well, if she made him pinky swear, folks, you really can't bring it up in a court of law. What do you mean she made him pinky swear? He claims that she let him feel her breasts and then said, pinky swear you won't tell anybody that I let you feel my breasts. And but then she went and told the sheriffs, bitch. So his, his, he's got the pinky swear defense? Yes. In his Your Honor, I'd like to say that my client was asked to pinky swear before he touched the defendant's breasts. This case is dismissed. Thank you, Your Honor. <laughs> However, the sheriff's department says that they won't be br uh, bringing any charges against him because there were no witnesses to the incident. Just the word of a 19-year-old transgendered niece. But that's not enough? Apparently not in Florida. They got real fucked up shit to deal with in Florida. Come on. That, wow, what a strange, strange tale that is. Yeah. 
Yeah, we'll just take him out with a double tap. Is that what that was? Uh, Gwyneth Paltrow has her website, goop.com. I don't know if you guys are regulars on goop. Uh, I go to a goop website, but it's very different than Gwyneth Paltrow's. <laughs> she says she's kicking off 2012 with a cleansing diet, and she wants you all to join her. Apparently, uh, Gwyneth wants to go from 47 pounds to 43 pounds, and so she is going on a cleansing diet. I'm starting off with Clean is the name of the cleanse. My go-to cleanse from Dr. Alejandro Younger. Sounds like he works on the back of a panel van. <laughs> uh, who Goop has partnered with for the month of January. Use Clean. Lose a few pounds and kickstart the year with a healthier, more energetic new year, Gwyneth adds. Okay. Are times tough for Gwyneth Paltrow, where she's selling us shaman's remedies now out of the back of a van? Is she? Do you have to pay to do this with her? It's a month. It's just a month to cleanse. Right. And it's just four hundred and twenty-five dollars if you want to get clean. Oh, I thought it was like one of those things. Like I'm gonna fucking put the syrup and cayenne pepper. It in is, water. but you gotta buy all the stuff from Dr. Younger before you, you go. You can't just buy it from a food store. No, no, no. Uh, she so says she's a little bit of shilling there. I'll be bit. doing it all month with members of the Goop team. Uh, I don't want to be on the Goop team. <laughs> I was in junior high school, and it was not fun. A lot of cleanup on the goop team, man. Hey, we got uh, porn star Kim Kardashian news. Get out I know here. he loved the Kardashians, yeah, so much so they have their own theme. Kim Kardashian, Kim Kardashian, who gives a fuck? Porn star Kim Kardashian this week told friends she wants to adopt a baby. Because her relationships aren't working out, she's afraid she won't be a mother. Oh, you're a mother, all right, Kim. <laughs> Also, Amber Rose, who used to date Kanye West, said this week that Kim Kardashian cheated on Reggie Bush with Kanye West while Amber Rose was still dating him. Jesus walks. <laughs> Amber said she'd like to thank Kim for being a homewrecker because now she's found true love with Wiz Khalifa. Yeah. I like that song that he does with Snoop, uh, Snoop yeah. Dogg. It's a good one. So I will get drunk. So I was but we. That's like our, it's our theme, theme song. song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That would be our first dance at our wedding. <laughs> also, uh, New York Post announced that Kim Kardashian and her family are talking to publisher American Media Incorporated about the Kardashian the Magazine. This is the publishing company that does Star and Shape and National Enquirer. They're going to, this spring, launch the Kardashian Magazine. I mean, I guess the idea is, like, uh, there's so much coverage of them in the other magazines, why not just go to the Well, one? we need more information about the Kardashians, so I'm glad they're putting out a magazine. Just, everyone, look away. Just don't look. Just don't look. Speaking of don't look, Justin Bieber's got some new ink. I don't know if you saw that this week or not. Please say it's a Jesus tattoo. Please say it's a Jesus tattoo. Let's take a picture of him on the beach here in Los Angeles this past weekend. It's on his, uh, I guess that would be his left calf. Can we get a close-up of that calf, James? Can you zoom in a little bit? Your prayers have been answered, Kevin. It is, in fact, a picture of Jesus on his calf. <laughs> it is the very same Christ head that my mother wears around her neck on a medallion it, this big. She's way into Jesus, and apparently so is the beef. He's, uh... But how into Jesus are you if you're putting him down on your calf? It's like, it's almost like, well, yeah, Jesus is not quite my co-pilot, but I let him carry my bags. Yeah. <laughs> Plus, if you get attacked by a shark and he takes your leg, then fucking the Jesus is gone. <laughs> Still with you and the sharks on the beach, you don't think? Uh, yeah, well, look, he's at the beach, man. Can we go back to that first picture, by the way? Look at this scrawny ass. Look at that. He's like... I, I, he should be on a, on a commercial with Sally Struthers asking me to donate money to give him a meal. Uh -oh. Look at the, my calf. The, my calf is as wide as his back. Yeah. He's a scrawny dude. He's very but little. he's got Jesus looking over his calf. So he's got that going for him. Uh, movie news. Sequel Mania continues in Hollywood. Just announced Paranormal Activity. Another Paranormal Activity in the works. Well, that makes sense. Yeah. They're easy to make. They're inexpensive to make. It's just printing money for Last me. time it was the baby, right? Got uh, possessed, yep. right? right. Uh, this time it's the dog. I think the family dog gets possessed in this one. <laughs> I don't know. Horrible Bosses, a sequel to Horrible Bosses. It's 
seems like they make sequels sometimes to movies that like they did okay or good for the first time around, but like aren't really necessarily crying well, it's out. Comedies, especially, they're so cheap to make yeah. that I guess they figure. Look, and the brand. Once you have a brand name, you can right. build on it. So look forward to horribler bosses, I guess, coming <laughs> to a theater near you. Um, it was, it was, sir. It was bad. <laughs> I, I don't mean to correct you. I, I thank you for coming to the show, but it was a very, very bad film. Yeah. But I still love you. Uh, movie news, Demi Moore is working again. I guess since uh, she and Ashton broke up, she figured she'd do something else with her life and uh, go back to acting. Yeah, she's going to be in a porn, kind of. No, no, no. No, she is going to be in a porn. But kinda. she's not going to be in a porn. It, what, go ahead, tell them what she, she's it's in. The, it's the life story of Linda Lovelace. Who was in? Deep Throat. Which is a? Porn. Thank you. But it's not a porn. I said it's kind of. She's playing Gloria Steinem, feminist icon Gloria Steinem, who's very anti-porn. I know, but the whole movie's about porn. Yeah, but she is not going to do the porn. No. She will be saying no, no, no to porn. Kind of. <laughs> Gloria Steinem, that's good. That's a good call. Amanda Seyfried is going to play um, Linda, Lovelace. Linda Lovelace. There's the two. Film. Isn't this one There's of these th like asteroid picture these movies? These are battling, battling Linda Lovelace biographies. We've never seen any movie about Linda Lovelace. Now we got two that are going to come out at the same time. And Amanda, what do you, how do you Seyfried? say it? Seyfried. Seyfried is in the one. And uh, Malin, Malin Ackerman. You say Malin? I say Malin. Okay. What do you say? Malin. Malin? I, yeah, I don't know, but you yeah. might be right. I don't know. I think she's from South Africa. <laughs> yeah. I don't think she is. I think she's, she's actually like from the North Norselands or something like that. She's like a, like a Viking girl. She's doing the other Linda Lovelace movie, and they've got competing um, co-stars because you know in um, Deep Throat, yeah. it started very popular of, at the time. Porn actor named Harry Reams was the star of that mm -hmm. film. In the Amanda Seyfried, well, she was actually the star of the film. Yes, but he was the established porn star. Yeah, at yeah, the time. yeah. Amanda Seyfried's version, uh, Adam Brody will be playing. I love Adam Brody. He's a good actor. Harry Reams. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's awesome. And in the Malin Ackerman version, Adam Goldberg will be playing Harry He's Reams. He's a good actor, too. Yeah, he is. Uh, Elton John biopic in the works. You want to see the life story of Elton John? Uh, as long as it's warts and all, yeah, man. Like anal warts or what? What are you talking oh. about? I'm just saying. Yeah. Elton John has announced he'd like Justin Timberlake to play him. Well, I'm sure you would, Elton. <laughs> I'd like George Clooney to play the version of me in the movie, but it's just, it's just not realistic. Um, Justin Timberlake, apparently he's good friends with Elton, and they've done some work before, and he thinks he'd be the perfect guy to play him in the movie. Right on. Yeah. Uh, Elton John, you are a, a fat, balding Brit, and uh, Justin Timberlake is a handsome, thin American. Yeah, but it's, it's on, on Broadway and stuff. And also, it's probably doing his younger life, not the... the he was uh, fat and bald when he was young. Really? Yeah. And Apple has announced a lawsuit against a company that is making a Steve Jobs action figure. <laughs> that is a misnomer if I've ever heard one. Even, even when Steve was alive, he wasn't an action figure, really. He would stand on stage and hold up a iPad, for right. the most part. But they have announced the I, Icons line, apparently called, is uh, making a Steve Jobs action figure. Apple is suing them, saying they own the rights to his likeness and that if you do produce this, you will be sued. But the problem is they've already released it. Apparently it's, already, it's going, it was a $99 toy and now it's going on eBay for $225 a piece because apparently it's going to cease and desist sometime soon. Have you seen pictures that look like it? Here's a, here's a shot of the, t of the toy. <laughs> It's pretty good. Yeah, that's not bad. At it all. looks like him. Yeah, I don't I remember mean, that. I don't remember public? that big ball around his wrist. But other than that, I. He does have a kind of GI Joe, old GI Joe wrist. Yeah, with the iPad grip. Um, but isn't he a, isn't he a public figure, man? Can you just make? That's their defense. But they've already shut down another manufacturer who was making a Steve Jobs action figure prior to that. So apparently, there's some legal precedent to this. So they may win the case. So order soon if you want your Steve Jobs action figure so you can battle Wonder Woman. <laughs> Make it that in the universe with your little Steve Jobs figure. Since we're talking about geeks, it's only time uh, for the geek news of the week. Ruffin' Kevin, Ruffin' Kevin, Ruffin' Kevin, geek news. There's been a lot of talk about who will play the villain in the next Star Trek movie. J.J. Abrams has announced that it will be Benedict Cumberbatch. Yeah, listen to the excitement. Benedict Cumberbatch. God bless you. Who was 
Uh, I don't know if you saw the Stephen Hawking movie, the TV movie about Stephen Hawking's life called Hawking. Mm-mm. He starred as Stephen Hawking in that. You ever see the BBC series Sherlock Holmes, mm-hmm. the updated Sherlock Holmes? He plays Sherlock Holmes. Here's a shot of uh, Mr. Cumberbatch right here as Holmes. There you go. He'll be playing the major villain in the next Star Trek movie. So Benedict Cumberbatch will be your new Star Trek villain. With a name like Benedict Cumberbatch, he should have been in a Harry Potter movie, I think. <laughs> Hello, I'm Benedict Cumberbatch. I teach you advanced potions. Ah. If he's the Defense Against the Dark Arts teacher, yes, exactly. then he turns out to be the bad guy. How dare you, spoiler alert. <laughs> Only in some of the books. And also, those movies are done. Who hasn't seen those movies? Me. I saw the first one. You never saw the rest? No, I never saw it. They're fucking ones. magical, Ralph. Yeah, I know. They'll take it places, man. Yeah, I know. No, <laughs> not even with that. Just like they're pretty, they're pretty cool. Yeah, I'll get around to them. Yeah, I got other stuff to look Expensive at first. Expensive as hell. I got a stack of porn like this. That I haven't worked my way through. <laughs> I got my own magic wand. More geek news. Akira. Any manga fans in the crowd? Uh, they're doing a live-action version of Akira that apparently has been shut down by Warner Brothers. They uh, stopped production on this thing. A long time ago. It was supposed to um, star Garrett Hedlund from Tron and Kristen Stewart, but they just closed the offices in Vancouver, the production offices, according to The Hollywood Reporter, due to budget problems. And Variety is saying it's because there's script issues. Some people are saying because people working on the film realize Kristen Stewart's a horrible fucking actress. <laughs> we don't know. Which one is she? Kristen Stewart's from uh, Twilight. She's oh, the girl from Twilight. Not, she's not that actress. Oh, come on, Kevin. Oh, no. I mean, I know it's like uh, everyone don't like Bella and shit because it's popular to bash, but she's actually a pretty decent actress. Did you see her in that Runaways movie? Yes, she played I, thought she, I liked her. I oh, thought she was, she was horrible. Really? Yeah. Well, I mean, don't trust my opinion. I hire bad actors all the time. That's true. Hey, wait a minute. <laughs> Uh, the Hobbit's coming out in a year. More Peter, walking. Peter Jackson <laughs> is bringing us part one of The Hobbit a year mm. from now. Oh, my God. Uh, December 14th, 2012. I, look to, I saw a trailer. Did you see the trailer? I did, yeah. No. Very impressive. I like that dude, too. The dude who plays uh, Bilbo this time around. Yeah. The, What's his name? The actor? Uh, he was in The Office. Yeah, I know. I can't think of his Somebody? name. Somebody? Right Martin, Martin Freeman. Martin Freeman, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Tim I thought British he was a really, office. really good choice. Uh, not everyone is happy about this film. There is already a boycott going on. What, from fucking Mordor? <laughs> no. It's a group you don't called, just boycott Mordor, Ralph. <laughs> it's a group called Christians for a Moral America. Christians for a Mordor America? No, no, moral, moral America. So like, the only thing that's going to keep these people in line is the fucking Eye of Sauron. Christians for a Moral America claim that Peter Jackson is an admitted atheist, and so he's sucking all the Christ out of the Hobbit story. <laughs> yeah. Those little guys with the hairy feet, you don't want them not talking about Jesus. <laughs> They, they do all, get, all the time in the book. Well, maybe they can compromise and all the hobbits can get tattoos of Jesus' head on their, <laughs> on their calves. Yeah, it's very current. Uh, they claim that Jackson, who is an admitted atheist, is Satan's little helper. <laughs> so wait, they're saying that he's literally draining the Christ out and also, like, number one, there's not a shit ton of Christ in these books. No. But number two, they're saying he's taking it all out and right. trying to sow the seeds of anti-Christianity? He's saying there he's using witchcraft and wizardry in this film. Wait a minute, witchcraft and wizardry? In, in, a, in a Lord of the Rings story? Mm. I find that hard to believe. Mm. Me too, man. I'm not so shy. <laughs> Fuck you, that was cute. They also complain that he's bringing everyone back from the Lord of the Rings like they're coming back from the dead. Yeah, I don't think they understand it's a prequel, sir. I think that's the problem with their logic. Maybe they haven't read the books. They say Christians will not tolerate this blatant anti-Christian bigotry yeah, and atheist propaganda. Our children's minds are filled with enough poison these days from the media without us as parents actively doing the same while filling liberal fat cat's coffers. I don't know, is the fucking Green Arrow taking them on? <laughs> <laughs> Who uses fat cats anymore? I know, anymore? that's crazy. You fat cats didn't finish your plankton. Yeah, well, I hope he has the wisdom to take all the wizardry out of the, <laughs> the Tolkien books because that just has no place in there. 
Um, I the yeah, come on, fuck off, dude. <laughs> like that, those are real first world problems, man. Where you're just like, we think that the Hobbit should have way more Jesus. You know, it's, it's hard to be a Christian these days when these people are running around claiming that they speak for Christians. No, it's, it's yeah, and it's they're really reaching the bottom of the barrel, man. When they're just like, let's go after this now. Movie's not even out. They don't even know what the movie's yeah. going to be about for Christ's sake. Uh, these people also said there wasn't enough cr uh, Christian in Yentl. Apparently, they said that was. <laughs> the problem. I think they're missing the point of some movies. They just. Um, hey, if you're looking for a gift to get me for Christmas, and I know most of you are, um, not the man great, no, but it's a great <laughs> gift. Start saving now for this Christmas coming up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kevin. Yes. Uh, they are now making the actual Tron light cycle from the movie Tron. Will it be street legal? It is street legal. Whoops. It is $55,000. They make it per order. And it is completely electric. It runs totally on an all-electric motor system. How fast? Uh, it does not say here how fast it goes, but it goes fast. Trust me. Because it's a light cycle. It goes like the fucking speed of light or whatever it is. I saw the movie. Does it leave a tail behind you so you can make cars crash? <laughs> I don't think it does that. A lithium, that lithium. would be worth it for me. It's just because then you could be a real offensive driver. Just Parker. run people into your tail. <laughs> Watch them blow up in your rear view. Parker Brothers Choppers is making the uh, actual light cycle from the 2010 film Tron Legacy. Uh, lithium ion battery powers the whole thing. It lights up. It's got that cool look. I brought in some footage of the actual uh, bike going down the street if you want to see it. But it, it starts. Yeah, see that? Look at that dude. Yeah, he's going to get all the ladies. All right, there's no room for a lady on his bike, but and you have to lay down when you ride it. Look, at, he puts his feet up. Look at that. Oh, that's so sweet. Yeah, that but is so sweet. So the problem is that's like a po that we're in a post bat pod world. So I see that and I'm like, that's nice, but I'd rather have the bat pod, man. That's fucking Tron, dude. Yeah, that theme you all know and love so well <laughs> and can hum in your you sleep. miss out on it. <laughs> Ralph Tron. Garman presents the theme from Tron. <laughs> I love the Tron theme. Do it, do it, do it again. Try to beat the CPU. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Jeff Goldbridge. Uh, Jeff Goldbridge. Jeff Bridges was in it. Yeah. Je uh, Jeff Goldblum. Jeff Bridges had a baby. Be Jeff Goldbridges. <laughs> Are we talking about Doctor Who earlier? This woman's a Doctor Who fan. Her name's Erica Quinn. She turned her house in Glasgow, Scotland, into the TARDIS. Get out of here. Yeah. Here's a photo of Erica outside the front of her house. She painted her front doors to look like the TARDIS. Oh, look at her. <laughs> oh, Erica. I weep for you, Erica. Uh, that's the front door of her house in Glasgow. She has life-size cardboard cutouts of the doctor in her window, along with all of his companions. A, a, a Dalek is also there. She dresses them up with different costumes for Christmas, Thanksgiving, Halloween, and Easter. She says, people walk by and just stop and stare at my house. People have started calling me the Doctor Who house lady. Yeah, that's what they're calling you, Eric. <laughs> It's the, <laughs> it's the Doctor Who house lady who's sad with many cats. <laughs> and I want to thank all the listeners this week who sent us the pictures from geeksaresexy.net, the website. Apparently they did a story. Uh, I don't know who the uh, artist is who did Did you get these two? Yeah, it's cute. Um, it is a guy who came up with the idea, what if Dr. Seuss had created Batman? <laughs> so... It is the Dr. Seuss take on many Batman characters. I brought in a couple photos of those of you who hadn't seen it yet. This is the first one is Batman. It's, uh, <laughs> I had trouble in making my way down crime, crime alley, it says. There he is sort of perched, looking sort of sad. Holding a batarang. Holding a batarang. The next one's the Joker. 
a funny thing happened on the way to Arkham Asylum. He looks so charming. It's yeah, he doesn't look crazy harmless. there as much. Yeah. And my favorite one by far is Two-Face, because I think this could be an actual Seuss book. 50% Harvey Dent. <laughs> it rhymes. All right, it's the end of our show, folks. Thanks so much for coming out. But before we say goodnight... Oh, we can't help but wonder How big is Liam Neeson's cock? <laughs> Liam Neeson's cock. You can add your own if you have any facts about Liam Neeson's cock to neesoncock.com. This all comes, of course, from uh, Kevin Smith's fascination, or at least until he saw Michael Fassbender's cock. About Do yourselves a favor. Go look at Shame. That's the movie. Just man. to see his cock. But the performances are good, and it's a you know it's a painful meditation on sex addiction. But fuck all that. His dick is it's just like a big fucking an orangutan's arm holding an apple. Holding a grapefruit. Last week we had the guy with the Pringles can you were upset uh, with, and now we got the Michael Fassbender cock. You're getting a bit of a reputation. I'm always amazed by that, because like this dude, he has like such a dangler, like a third fucking. We like, understand he's gifted, got a big penis. Gifted from God, like here, have a massive dick for your whole fucking life. That's that's all you need in life. Like he got that one thing. Then he also got to be an actor. He got two things. It's unfair, man. Yeah. If you're going to have a dig that big, leave some uh, something else for other people. But you don't know how he lives his life. You don't know what he has to deal with. What? He might have hemorrhoids or something. You don't know. He might have something bad going on, too. No way, man. He's in shape and shit. I'm, I'm telling you, I think he did that movie just as a commercial. to be like, wait till you see my dick. Yeah. <laughs> it's not enough to be a movie star. Now he's going to get all the ladies, right? Mm. Well, Liam Neeson, before this week, was Kevin's uh, cock crush. And so we've taken a look at the size of Liam's cock and come up with some fascinating facts. Liam Neeson's cock is so big. Even Oliver Twist pushes away from the table and says, please, sir, I've had enough. <laughs> it's, a, it's a lot. <laughs> Liam Neeson's cock is so big. He can pay at the first window and pick up his food at the second window at the same time. <laughs> Liam Neeson's cock is so big. How big is it? Even Tom Cruise uses a stunt double when filming on it. <laughs> Liam Neeson's cock is so big. How big is it? Janice Dickinson is still fucked. <laughs> She, of course, was the famous <laughs> Yeah, she's the one that revealed tail. that he has, he's built, he's hung like an Evian bottle. That was said. her word, the big one. The big one, yeah. Liam Neeson's cock is so big. How big is it? When he orgasms, the woman's body expands like Violet Beauregard in Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. <laughs> <laughs> Violet, you're turning Violet, Violet. Oompa, loompa, doompa dee doo. I think Liam Neeson came inside you. <laughs> what do you do when the cock is so big? Builds you up like a slutty little pig. <laughs> Maybe you should put that cock down. Then you won't be so round, so round, like a big fat whore. <laughs> We should probably just go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's the hell have to go out on. Liam Neeson's cock is so big. How big is it? Liam Neeson is the only man alive who's too long to fly. <laughs> Liam Neeson's cock is so big. How big is it? Liam was originally cast in the bridges of Madison County as a bridge. <laughs> <laughs> Liam Neeson's cock is so big. How big is it? It's knock, knock, knocking on heaven's door. <laughs> Liam Neeson's cock is so big, How big is it? that its needs outweigh the needs of the many. <laughs> <laughs> Liam Neeson's cock is so big, How big is it? that Katy Perry recently saw it for the first time, Nuff said. <laughs> Liam Neeson's cock... <laughs> See, that's why the, the marriage broke out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I together. didn't know that existed. <laughs> Goodbye, Russell. Yeah. Yeah. Liam Neeson's cock is so big, how how big is it? that his bush has pygmies. <laughs> <laughs> Liam Neeson's cock is so big, how big is it? that when he gets erect, groups of people begin to chant, 
Deshi, Deshi, Basara, Basara. <laughs> when asked what it means, he responds, rise. <laughs> <laughs> Liam Neeson's cock is so big. He doesn't pee his pants when he's drunk. That's coolant to keep it from overheating. <laughs> we talked about him peeing his pants last week, yes. but a bit. We got a, quite a few of those. <laughs> Liam Neeson's cock is so big no, oh, that when he's done peeing, he doesn't shake it. He throws it over his shoulder and burps it. <laughs> <laughs> That's cute. You could tell your mother that one. Man. I wouldn't. <laughs> I'd I'm tell gonna, your mother that. I'm going to call her up on the ride home, man. Mama, I got the best Liam Neeson's cock joke. <laughs> Liam Neeson's cock is so big. How big is it? That Liam Neeson has to use a megaphone to tell you how pleased he is with your dick sucking. You're doing very well. <laughs> Liam Neeson's cock is so big. How big is it? That in conversation, John Lovitz will casually name drop that he knows it. <laughs> he does like to mention his famous friends. Yes. And lastly, Liam Neeson's cock is so big. How big is it? It doesn't need diplomatic immunity. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you guys have a good time tonight. Thank you all for coming out for the first Babylon for the new year. Come, keep coming back. It works if you work it. <laughs> For Hollywood Babylon, I'm Kevin Smith. I'm Ralph Garman. Babble the fuck on, everybody. Good night. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up one more time. Kevin Smith and Ralph Garman. Hollywood Babylon live at the Lovitz. All right, kids, that's going to do it for us.